Hello everyone and welcome back. So this is going to be a different kind of video that I usually make. One that is kind of improvised as for I did not have any intentions to do anything about this event. But given the headlines, I feel like it's important for us how analysis regarding Reveal of Evangelion are affected now. Not only the ones on this channel, but on other content creators, IVA bloggers and forum discussions. Just to bring you all up to date, in case you didn't know, past Tuesday, March the 8th, Thrice Upon a Time, their last reveal movie, turned one year since its premiere in Japanese theaters. Thus, Kara decided to do a watch party with the staff of the film, including Hideki Anno on Twitch, and do a Q&A so Anno could answer some of the viewers' questions. These questions weren't taken live from the chat, but instead they asked to send one written question in advance with the deadline set one day before the event. Thus, all of these questions were handpicked by someone at Kara before the livestream, and probably the reason why about half of the questions were technical, behind off stage, instead of uh, story related. So I will be going briefly over some of the answers that I found more relevant, but going over all of the questions as I was covering live on my Discord on Tuesday morning, I find three answers that could easily be headlines out of this. So let's start with what is by far the biggest one, and that is that Anno for the first time addressed the Mary meta interpretation of she being an insertion of Moyoko Anno, his wife, in the story. Something that he completely rejected in this occasion. This is very important as for many Eva bloggers, in particular those in the Mari Isle, her fan base, been defending her role in the story as such, and there has been strong arguments made about this. I myself accepted this back when the movie was released, as for I didn't find any particular logic reason of the character role other than being a disruptor, a destructor of the story, something that was confirmed many years ago, something that she turned out to be. And although I partially accepted some of these arguments, I never defended them as for I am more traditional, I like to analyze what I see, and meta is very subjective. I even did two hours plus live stream last year where I discussed with chat exclusively about the Mary character trying to go over her role over the all of the story, taking out the meta aspects of her to see if the character made any sense at all. Now, to be fair with her fans, Anna has confirmed in the past, all the way back to the Neon Genesis Evangelion era, how the characters represents real people and are his interpretations on them. So, the Mary meta interpretation has or had a solid base up to this point for these arguments. So, let's go over the full answer. We have seen various articles, videos, etc. that claim Mary was modeled after Anno's wife, but this is merely only the assumption and a speculation of a handful of people. At the time of production, this would have been impossible. Mary's personality, as well as Ask and others, was created by director Surumaki's hand. It's a bit of fun for the audience to interpret characters and storylines as they wish, and it's a playground of intellectual fan speculation. That being said, it is sad to see the staff and their families disparage by baseless assumptions, so we'll clearly deny that this is the case. So yes, he clearly denies it. And even though it's the first time that he does it, other in the staff over the past few months also have done the same, including Mayoko Anno. Uh, but for the most important thing here is that Mary's personality, as well as Asuka's and other, uh, were created by Surumaki. This is important. We all knew, as I said countless times over the past, that Asuka this time around was completely under the care of Surumaki. Actually, the one that came up with the idea of putting Asuka in Unit 3 in the second movie was Surumaki, an event that changed the story completely, at least Asuka's arc. So we knew that Surumaki had a big role over deciding how things were going to play out. Now Anno confirms that was not only Asuka, but also Mari and others. Now, this is very interesting because there was another question asking if he would do Evangelion again and replied that he has told the story three times already, so he included Saramoto's manga as his own, even if it's widely known that Saramoto took a lot of liberties, to say the least, on how that particular story was going to develop. Going back to Mari, they recognized that there were some sequences featuring Mari that were edited out. More specifically, where she interacts with characters other than Shinji and Asuka. 
She also interacted with Koso, by the way, and appeared on Gendo's background story. It is still unknown how much of Mari was edited out and what characters she interacted with, but I guess they will save that for the future. This tells me that Mari's role was going to be more relevant, and perhaps the ending will have made more sense than it actually makes now that you took out the biggest pillar on the meta character arguments on Mari. Now that that is out of the window, proves the arguments made on the other side that the flaws of this character's arc were just lazy writing. To be clear, I didn't like the character for the meta, I like it for being very different to the rest of Evangelion characters, so my perception on Mari remains on touch. And I'm glad that the meta thing is losing steam, as for now this opens endless possibilities on the character's background moving forward. This in video games or manga or whatever they intend to do with the IP next. Alright, so let's go over the second headline, and that is that the first act, Village 3, was rewritten. I said on my review how the first act feels like it's not part of the movie as a whole. This might be the reason why. They didn't say at what point of production it was rewritten or the extent of it, but this confirms that the start of the film was supposed to be at least a bit different. I described the whole first act of the film as Ghibli meets The Walking Dead in my review, which is funny because they admitted that they took inspiration out of Ghibli for this act that in my opinion, which remains on change, is the weakest act of the film. It is important to say that Anno did consider changes in post-production, but due to the health emergency, he was tight on budget and further changes could not be made. I didn't hate this part of the film, I just found it awkward. It does have good things, I liked Asuka and most of Reiki, but the rest of it is meh. That hasn't changed a bit. Every time I rewatch it, I just skip it. Just as I say skip episode 4 of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Finally, the third headline for me was that Anno confirmed, for the first time in a long time by the way, because it's not the first time he does it, that he's open to the idea of having others to make Evangelion. This is something that some fans, including myself, are really looking forward to. I love Anno's work and all it means, but obviously he doesn't want to do anything more with it, and the staff around him, Surumaki, Sadamoto, Maeda, etc., hasn't been able to bring us a real different story. I would like to see something really groundbreaking by people who's not connected to Kara or Anno. Even if it's a massive failure as a result, uh, at least let me see what others are capable to do with it. It has happened with other properties in the past, so why not Eva? And that's it. Those are the three major headlines that, in my opinion, came from this Q&A. There was nothing about Asuka. He only mentioned the ending once, said that, after the movie ended, Mari and Shinji went to a local cafe, uh, debunked three minor fan theories that I never heard of and frankly irrelevant in my opinion. And some of the questions were the same old questions he was asked before or he has been asked before and every time he does, he gives the same old answer. There was nothing about the SJHU, uh, what I've been calling the Anoverse, uh, I was expecting him to address something there, but we got nothing. So, in case you don't know, during mid-February, Toho and Toei announced a new shared universe, the SJHU, uh, which stands for Shin Japan Heroes Universe, and will bring under the same world Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, Shin Kamen Rider, and of course, Shin Evangelion. There is barely nothing we know about this other than we'll be under Hideki Anno's direct supervision and Maeda's illustrations, so, so far in my opinion it seems just like a massive marketing campaign so all of these properties can help supporting one another. I have some speculations and theory moving forward in this potential cinematic universe, but I will make a video on the future about it uh, when we get more info. Alright guys, so that's all. I hope this video was informative. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe and like the video if you did. And as always, I wish you all a wonderful day.